In the next unit, unit 5, where I want to look at how to parallelize string matching. We've seen a handful of different algorithms that can solve this problem in the sequential setting. And uh, some of you might have seen these algorithms before. They're sometimes done in undergraduate classes as well, but uh, quite definitely not the parallel string matching algorithms. And uh, we also want to use this as a, another um, little playground where we can practice our knowledge on, on parallel algorithms. So let's get started with this. Here's the outline. Um, I want to talk a little bit of uh, about just what you can get with parallelizing um, string matching in a very, very uh, simplistic way. And it turns out um, this is already leading us a certain way, but uh, leaves, leaves uh, some questions open. And uh, we'll see that the current methods that we have only get us so far. Um, so we need a new idea, and this is uh, periodicity, which leads to uh, string matching by duals. We might not get to the last section today, but um, I think we should uh, should be able to manage uh, part one and two for, for today. So let's try to parallelize string matching. Remember um, parallelization, we're on this PRAM model. We have uh, parallel processing elements. Um, and uh, we need something where there's no data dependencies between one step and the next step. Then we can actually, instead of running these uh, one after the other, we can run them in parallel. So uh, let's look at what, what the status is for, for string matching. Uh, we've seen quite a few different methods, but uh, if you look at them all, uh, go through them again, um, maybe uh, offline, uh, they all seem inherently sequential. Um, and. Uh, Effectively, um, maybe the brute force method out of the outside, they all really became efficient by using knowledge from the, the step just before. And that's, that's really uh, a game stopper for, for parallelism. So uh, what can we do about this? And um, how far can we get with, with simple tricks? That is what I want to look in this first subsection. Um, it's more natural here uh, to actually look at the problem of finding all occurrences of a pattern in the text. Um, it's more natural in the parallel setting because uh, finding the first occurrence means you have to communicate much more with the different processing elements. And clearly, if you find all occurrences, you can easily find the first one afterwards. Um, it turns out that it's it's just more natural for the algorithms. So we'll we'll switch gears here and uh, look at how to find all occurrences of the pattern in the text. Uh, you can imagine we just produce an output, uh, a bit array, where um, it has the same length as the text, and we just set um, that bit array to one if an occurrence of the pattern starts at that pos at that position and a zero otherwise. Um, that's an easy way to, to find this. And then we can use, well, prefix sums and binary search to find the first occurrence or, uh, or even smarter techniques. Also, um, unlike in the previous section, I do want to assume that the pattern is shorter than the text here. It's always easy to test for this. And if the pattern is longer than the text, come on. Uh, we don't expect any occurrences. OK. So uh, that's the setup. Now, um, what can we do without, um, without trying too hard? Uh, there's a notion I want to introduce, and that is embarrassingly parallel. This is, um, well, it's a piece of, of terminology that's maybe, again, not, not, uh, not great, but this is the term that uh, stuck and people use it, so you should know it. Uh, intuitively, embarrassingly parallel means that a problem can be split into many small subtasks, and you can do this easily, and they're all independent of each other. Um, the solution might be depending on the solutions for all of the little subtasks, but usually we assume that combining these solutions is, is easy. Um, a very typical, very simple example of an embarrassingly parallel problem is to sum 
two large matrices of numbers or two large vectors for that uh, for that matter it doesn't make a difference uh, the sum of a matrix is just the component by sum of all the different uh, entries so uh, every every number in the output can be computed by one uh, processing element by summing up two numbers from the two input matrices and that's it right that's uh, constant time um, work efficient parallel algorithm for summing two matrices completely trivial and uh, that's why people call it embarrassingly parallel it's uh, it's so easy to parallelize that you already feel almost feel embarrassed many problems are not embarrassingly parallel or at least not in their entirety or not at first sight and uh, one example that we've seen is sorting uh, the entire problem rearranging a list it doesn't seem to uh, allow this immediate splitting into um, into sub problems so it seems it's, it's really not embarrassingly parallel um, but uh, some some parts of it are embarrassingly parallel we we use this in quicksort uh, comparing all the elements with the pivot and noting the results um, that is embarrassingly parallel because you can do it in parallel for all uh, the different um, positions in the array so um, I would like to ask you about your gut feeling. Do you think um, that the string matching problem is embarrassingly parallel? I'm asking this here knowing that you can't really know. Uh, so this is, I haven't told you about this. We've just started thinking about this. Um, so maybe it's almost like um, asking you to randomly guess, but maybe you have a gut feeling and we'll, we'll revisit this question uh, later to see um, how well you, you were about this. So I'll just um, leave the question open. And um, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll wait a sec and uh, lock the voting then. That's more fun. And I'll just ask the question the second time and then we can compare the, the votes. So I'm waiting for the magic 25 votes again. Um, we currently have this uh, 19 and uh, come on guys, just uh, first, first thoughts. What do you think? Is it easy to parallelize string matching or is it hard? Or does it matter um, what the parameters are like? Give it a shot. Um, nothing bad happens. And uh, it's anonymous anyways. All right. So um, let's lock the vote in. Um, I won't comment on this now. Let's uh, continue. So to be embarrassingly parallel, we have to identify subproblems, right? Uh, and a natural thing in string matching is to say, checking one guess is a subproblem. And um, that, that's a suitable thing. We can find all the matches by checking all the guesses, that's for sure. So uh, that, that looks reasonable. And um, an easy thing to do is, yeah, let's do all the guesses. So uh, all, all n minus m guesses. And just uh, run in parallel um, for each of the guesses compare if the text at this position um, matches the pattern. If we do this with um, n processors or n processing elements, each checking sequentially if there is a, if there is a match, then we need uh, theta m parallel time and we need theta of n times m parallel um, total work. And uh, uh, this, this will be um, the main um, shortcoming of this first approach. But I do want to comment on, on the time. We can actually improve the time even to constant on this weird um, model where you can concurrently write to cells and have some, um, even the weakest way of resolving conflicts is fine. And uh, you will actually do this in the tutorials. You will find solutions to these two tasks, even though it's, um, it's, it's written in a different way or it's posed in a different way. But uh, you will you will do this and um, yep. 
So you can do the check itself also in parallel and thus improve the time. Both of these will not improve the work. The work remains at theta n times m and um, that's, not, that's not that great. Uh, we can do something different, an entirely different idea that um, will work out to be work efficient but the, uh, the parallel time in this case is, is stuck at theta m. So it's not so clear um, how, how good that is if m is really big. And the idea here is uh, to use the efficient sequential methods that we had. Now, um, if you want something work efficient and you need um, roughly m time to check a single check, there's no way you, can, you, you make this work by doing n checks. You have to reduce the number of checks to n divided by m if you want anything with linear work, uh, with uh, work in, well, length of the text. Um, I guess, strictly speaking, this is... Uh, okay, I'm assuming m is at most n. That's, uh, yeah, we do need also theta m work, but that's the same. In, in theta classes. Okay, uh, what we do is we divide the text into overlapping blocks. So we double cover every position. We cover this like this and then the odd ones cover it here and we cover it here. All right, so this is, uh, these are the little blocks that we use. And now uh, why do we do this? And the blocks have two M characters. So whenever there is a, a pattern uh, occurrence here because uh, we double cover everything and the blocks are twice the size we always find one block where the occurrence lies entirely within that block that is the important part and that means um, we can individually in each of these blocks use our sequential method to finding any occurrence in this in this block and then combine the output by uh, writing the results um, to an output array or something similar. Okay. So uh, you divide it into blocks of that, that many blocks. Each block has, has length 2m or m in, in we ignore the constant factors world. And uh, running an, an efficient sequential method, for example, KMP, it needs n plus m time, but n now is 2m. So uh, the total time is, is theta m. So that's why we get linear work and uh, the running time, the parallel running time is theta m. Okay, now I want to ask this same question again. And let's see if you uh, come to a different conclusion now or not. And um, more importantly, let's see if you uh, followed the presentation and can can make sense of it. Okay, I'm waiting for the uh, magic 25. Come on, guys. We can do a few more. All right. Yep, looks good. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, the uh, the string matching problem is embarrassingly parallel in this sense that you can find many small independent subproblems only if the pattern is small. And uh, the reason is just um, if the subtasks are checking one guess, then uh, that guess uh, you only have um, you only have uh, n minus m of these and um, if m is roughly the same as n, then there's not so many subtasks, whereas each of the subtasks is still um, a fairly, fairly big problem. But if the pattern is very small, we don't really have to work hard. If the pattern is really small, 
uh, it might be good enough to just check all the guesses in parallel. It's not work efficient the way I suggested it, um, but if the patterns are really, really small, we might not care so much. Okay. That brings me to the conclusion of this elementary sessions. Um, elementary algorithms, they're very simple. They are uh, conceptually simple and they're also easy to code up. Um, the most complicated thing might be that they rely on K and P, uh, but you know, um, K and P is, is uh, maybe complicated to understand, but not hard to implement. Um, yeah, if, um, if we're changing models and uh, not look at uh, a, a, um, a uh, shared memory parallel machine, but a distributed setting, uh, we could distribute parts of the text. So um, the subproblems are independent, even in the sense that they don't have to look at the same positions in the data. Uh, that's, that's another convenient feature. Uh, but we only really get a great parallel speed up um, if M is small, or if we uh, bite the bullet and use this work inefficient method. Even then, uh, it's, um, you know, if, if we simulate the work span model on an actual machine with uh, not 10 thousandths of cores, then uh, the extra work does hurt. So we, we definitely want um, a more work efficient solution, unless the pattern's really, really small. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, one thing we're stuck with seems to be the matching process. Um, the simple way to parallelize it, um, maybe uh, this is worth going back. So there's, there's two, two problems with the current solutions. This one achieves great work, but we cannot easily, we, it seems impossible to parallelize the um, K and P part here. So we're stuck with um, linear time in the length of the pattern. Here, the time can be improved by doing these tricks to do the check in parallel, but we're still stuck with the uh, with the worst case n times m work. And um, for a reasonable number of processors, that will not help us much. 